Welcome to Amy Learns to Cook. On the show today, we are going to make a homemade Dutch apple pie. Now, I know it's very tempting to go into your frozen food section and grab one of those Dutch apple pies out of the freezer and throw it in the oven and call it a day. But let me tell you, there is nothing like a homemade Dutch apple pie. For one, it doesn't taste like it came off of a machine. And two, you know exactly what you're putting into it. So you don't have to worry about preservatives. You can even make it all organic. So today, let's make a homemade Dutch apple pie. Okay, so the first step to making our Dutch apple pie is making a pie crust. And the advice I can give you is please make a homemade pie crust. If you don't know how to make a pie crust, please see my video, Amy's Pie Crust. They are so easy to make and it makes for a homey and comforting pie when your pie is, has a homemade fresh pie crust. So what we're gonna do now is prepare the filling. And we are going to be using some really um, kind of sweet, kind of tart, really hard apples. These happen to be galas, but you also can use Granny Smith's. You want something that's going to hold up to the heat, otherwise it will pretty much break it down and you will just basically have applesauce. So you want something that's a really firm apple, tart, sweet, and delicious, right? Now there's several methods to making an apple pie. And recently I took a cooking class at a local community college and we tested three different ways to make a homemade apple pie. And then our class tasted all the different ways and we all voted to see which pie we like the best. There's three main methods for an apple pie. You can, number one, use a pie filling, right? Number two, you can take raw apples and put them in your pie crust and bake it that way. And the third method is what they call a cooked pie method. And basically, that's what we're going to use today. Because after testing all of the different various ways, our class 100% agreed that the best way to make an apple pie is the cooked fruit method. This is because the apples soften up slightly, they take on the sweetness of the sugar and the spices that we're going to give it. If you only have your apples in your pie straight raw, a lot of times they don't really cook enough. So you just have a bunch of liquid and raw apples in the center of your pie. And it is a lot more appealing to have them slightly cooked in advance. So that's how we're going to make this pie. So to process these apples, you can use one of those little fancy core peelers that does it all at one time. I don't have one of those because it's just another thing around that I gotta wash. We are only gonna be doing nine to 10 large apples. So it's just as easy to peel and core them th these ourselves. So to do that, what I do is I first take off the ends of the apple, right? And then I just get out my handy dandy um, potato peeler and I peel it. And this job is pretty much simple as pie. This allows me to do a little thinking, right? Because I get, gives me a little extra time just to sort of relax and enjoy making a homemade pie. And it also lets me strategize on what I'm gonna eat with this pie. Usually that is, in my case, is imitation whipped cream. In Eric's case, it's either fresh whipped cream or it's ice cream, right? Because he likes it a la mode. But unfortunately, I'm allergic to milk. So I have to go with the imitation stuff. Okay, so now that we have our apple 
peeled, we're just going to core it and chop it. And we can do this sort of all at one time. So we're going to cut it like this, and then we're going to cut it right there. And we're just going to take the core out. We're sort of doing this in one swoop. Okay? That one I got a little close. And then we're just going to chop it. So we're going to chop it this way, and we're going to make slices like that. This one, I didn't quite get all the core out. And we're going to throw them into a saute pan. Okay, so we're going to chop up nine to ten large size apples. One of the things you do is if it takes a little time for you to do some chopping and to flavor your apples, we're going to put a little lemon juice because apples can have a, once you peel them and chop them, they have a tendency to oxidize a little bit. So the lemon juice will just keep that from happening. And we're just going to squeeze this into our saute pan. Not only is it going to keep the lemons from oxidizing, but it's also going to give us a little tangy flavor in our pie. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off the rest of these apples and then we will cook them. Okay, so we got all those apples processed and it's, it is quite a bit of work to do that, but it's very enjoyable work, right? So we put them into this saute pan and we are going to um, cook these until they soften up a little bit and we're going to create a little bit of syrup with them, right? So what we have is our apples in here and we sprinkled in some fresh lemon juice just to keep them, number one, from browning and number two, to give our, our pie here a little bit of tang. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in some sugar and how much sugar depends really on how sweet you want it. I've over sweetened a pie before, um, probably a half all the way up to one whole cup. I'm just going to sprinkle this around and see what, how we're looking. Probably going to put in about two thirds of a cup of the sugar. Whoops. That looks pretty good. You just kind of want your apples coated. And you can watch as they cook to see what kind of syrup you're getting out of them. And if you want a little bit more, you can add a little bit more sugar, right? We're also going to spice it up. Now what I have is some apple pie spice. Um, and it smells so good. And I use this on all kinds of different stuff. You can use it in French toast, you can use it in muffins, you can use it in all kinds of stuff. If you can't get apple pie spice, basically it's cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg, a little bit of mace, and a little bit of cloves. You can just mix that around to your taste and put it in here, right? So we're going to put about a teaspoon. I like it really spicy. So we're going to try with two teaspoons for starters. And we're going to let this cook down until we get a nice sugary syrup. And it's going to be flavored really nicely with our apple pie spice. And it's going to taste really, really good. What? Don't tell Eric you saw that. Okay, that now that our um, apples are cooking over here, we're going to make a streusel topping. And a streusel topping is pretty much just a sugary crumb topping that's going to make our pie really, really good. So what I have here is, in this bowl, I have 
a third of a cup of sugar and a third of a cup of brown sugar, packed brown sugar, and we're just going to mix that. To that, we are going to add a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. So we're going to put a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. And we're also going to put um, a tablespoon of yellow cornmeal. And this is just a cornmeal you would make cornbread out of, right? That's a tablespoon of yellow cornmeal. And we're going to put in six tablespoons of melted butter. And we're just going to mix this up and it's going to come together and make a nice crumbly topping for us. And this is going to go on the top of the pie. So that's what a Dutch oven, a Dutch apple pie is. Instead of two pie crusts, it's a regular pie crust at the bottom and it's this crumbly, sugary topping over the top. So our crumble is looking pretty good. So we're going to finish off the apples and then assemble the pie. Okay, so our apples have been cooking for about 20 minutes or so. And what you'll see is the apples are starting to soften up. You'll also see that a liquid has formed and this liquid is a nice syrupy, sugary, sweet, spicy liquid. The problem is if you just put it in here like this, it's just going to be real watery. And this is what happens when you bake a pie without cooking it is you get a lot of this liquid in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little slurry in here. And basically what a slurry is, is just corn, a little bit of cornstarch um, dissolved in a little bit of water. About a teaspoon of cornstarch, put a little water in it, it's going to look kind of milky. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to dump this in. And what this is going to do is it's going to tighten up that sauce. And it's going to thicken pretty quickly with that in there. Um, one thing about it is that it has to heat up and kind of come to a boil before you really get the thickening power of a slurry. But just let it cook a little bit and you're going to see some magic happen in this pan. This liquid is going to slowly tighten up. If it doesn't quite tighten up for you, mix a little bit more slurry, dump it in, and you will watch this get a nice syrup to it. This is going to tighten up and become a nice little syrup. Okay, so after I put that in, I decided maybe to put a little bit more. So I put another teaspoon with a little bit of water and it is really thickening up nicely. It's created this little sauce here that's going to be in our pie that's kind of like a little apple gravy, right? So it looks like our apples are ready to put into our pie. Okay, so our first step to assembling our pie is we are going to par-bake our pie shell. And what I mean is we are going to bake it off a little bit because if we don't, it will take too much time in the oven and the edges will get brown before the bottom is done. So what we're going to do is we're going to just going to take this cookie sheet and we're going to line it with some parchment paper and we're going to take our pie shell. Now this is a homemade pie shell. If you're interested in this recipe, check out Amy's pie crust video, right? You can use a um, store-bought shell, but this, is a, this will be much better, right? Um, I encourage you to try to make a pie crust, but if you absolutely can't or you don't have time, you can use uh, one from the store. So just make sure it is a deep dish one. This is a really deep pan and this is going to be a nice deep dish pie. 
So whether you're using a homemade crust or one from the store, what you want to do is take a fork and put some little holes in it like this. We call this docking, right? And this is just to prevent any bubbles from forming in the pie because it will get bubbles in it if you don't dock it. So we're going to go ahead and put these little holes in here to release any air that might want to escape during baking and leave us with a nice, not so good looking bubble in our crust. So you definitely want to go all around the edges as well as at the bottom. Because I didn't do this one time around the edges and I got a bubble around the edge. This is going to be a very rustic looking pie. Okay, so we have some nice holes for the steam to escape. And we're going to throw this in the oven until it just starts to cook slightly. We don't really want to brown it. Um, maybe anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes. Um, you just need to check and depending on how your oven's calibrated. We're going to do this at 350. So we're going to go ahead and Put it in the oven and par bake our crust. And as soon as it, it's done, we will add the filling. Now our pie is par baked and it's ready to come out of the oven. Um, it's all not browned, it's just slightly baked. It is nice and warm. <laughs> and now we're going to fill it. Kind of decided to put a little pinch of salt in here with the, um, the apples just to bring out their flavor a little bit more. And so we are going to put our apples into our pie shell with all the juicy goodness that goes along with them. And wow, it <laughs> looks good already. Make sure I don't have all the liquid just on one side. We're gonna even that out. And now we're going to put on our topping. This is our crumb topping. And we made this a little earlier. And what you want to do is just go ahead and cover your apples with this crumb topping. This is looking really good. Gonna have a nice thick layer of crumb topping because this stuff is really yummy. Make sure you cover all the apples all the way to the edge. And so we're gonna put this back in the oven and we're gonna bake it until it is nice and bubbly and the crust is done and the Strusel topping is going to be slightly browned. Okay, it's time to take the pie out of the oven. Ooh, it's looking good. It's bubbling over. This is why it's really good to have a um, sheet of parchment on your um, baking sheet because if it, it bubbles over, which it probably will, it will um, catch it and it'll make the cleanup a lot easier. So let's take a look at it. Ooh, it looks so good. It's bubbling, smells like fresh cinnamon apples. The topping looks real good. We're gonna let this cool for 
10 or 15 minutes, depending on how long Eric can keep his hands off of this thing. And then we will we'll slice it and give it a taste. Okay, now it's time to take a taste. It's been a couple minutes. Can't say it's been 15, but it's been a couple. So we're gonna cut us a nice piece of this pie. Um, one thing I can tell you is I'm not 100% sure if this will come out just looking like a perfect piece of pie. But right about now, I don't even care. Because this looks so delicious, it's going to look fine to me. And we're going to whip this pie out of here. Woo! No, it didn't come out as a whole piece of pie. That's okay. That is okay. I sort of messed it up a little bit when I took that piece out. Let's move the pie over. And we are going to take a taste. Now, most people want whipped cream on the top. I'm allergic to milk, so I'm going to be using the fake stuff. But you could eat this with whipped cream. You can eat it with ice cream. You can eat it just as is. It'll be just fine with me. We're gonna put a nice dollop. I mean, even though I mutilated a little bit, I'm sure it's gonna taste just fine. I'm gonna get a little bit of those apples, a little bit of crumb topping, a little bit of crust. Mmm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Let me take another taste. Let's get some of the other crust. Mm. This is better than anything you'll ever be able to buy. This is just totally and completely incredible. Mm. If you like the recipe, please log on to my website at amylearnstocook.com or follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash amylearnstocook. There's definitely more videos to come, so click, click the subscribe button below and stay tuned. Gonna have to wait for this to cool off. So I can just grab the rest in one bite without burning myself. This is great. Danny, actually learned to cook some.